I kept thinking about the show that Kelly and I used to like to watch. Uh, it was called Undercover Boss, if you've ever seen it before. Uh, in a, in a company, a boss will go in disguise and go into one of his stores, usually or restaurants or something like that, and uh, be one of the workers hired on. And, and uh, as he or she uh, gets to work with some of the employees who are servers or their cooks or their janitors or what have you, and he tries to, or she tries to ingratiate themselves and, and ask questions and find out what it's like working for this company. And they will share with them. And there's some pretty incredible stories that the employees shared. Some of them are, are single parents. They're young. They've got uh, two jobs and they're barely making ends meet, and, but they're very high on the company. They enjoy what they do. They're good with people. And uh, they, they offer a lot to the company. And as it resolves through later through the, the show, uh, the undercover boss reveals him or herself to the employees one by one and offers them things that they, they dearly need. Um, in some cases it's scholarship, some cases it's management, uh, uh, leadership, uh, training, or in some cases it's a house. It just varies on and on, but the people go on and they have no idea that this is their boss. And I think about this when I think about this this journey that Jesus is on continues after his resurrection. He sees the women and says, tell my other brothers that I'll be meeting with them. And on his way to meet them, two people along the way, and they have no idea who he is. He's just one of many, many people, a stranger in the land who has no idea what has happened. And so for them to fill in this stranger, what would, would have been happening and their perspective of what's going on. And how can you be the only one who hasn't heard what this Jesus of Nazareth has done? And we had hoped that he would be the Messiah to save us, to redeem Israel. And that was our hope. And then we heard the women at the tomb and said, the angels said that he's back. And so we we're kind of waiting for that day. Jesus, in a sense, is going undercover to find out what has been talked about with him, what kind of effect that he's had. Uh, with all this, you would think um, for a king at least, he would come back in, in pomp and circumstance and, and all these kinds of things, but he doesn't. He comes back as a nobody, a stranger, just to see what, how he was received. And maybe his words have made an influence on people. And as he's talking to them, you notice that they, they don't let him go. They want to hear more, so they invite him to their house for their hospitality take care of him, maybe to hear more, but maybe to just offer something. Maybe it's that Jewish hospitality that was so famous back then and, and, and now. Jesus comes as one who is still humble. His words have made an impact. He still wants to know what people think and, and of who he is. You recall Jesus with his disciples asking them, Peter, who, or his disciples, who do people say that I am? And some say a prophet, some say Moses, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, and, and Peter says it, he gets it right, he says, you're the Messiah, the Son of God, all those kinds of things. So Jesus comes back as an unknown to fulfill what he's been talking about all along, his ministry to the every person his gentle way, his subtle way of making a difference in the world. And we've seen, if these people, these two are, are correct, that all of Jerusalem knows about this Jesus of Nazareth, it's pretty amazing since he didn't stand on the corner with a bullhorn and yell out who he was. It was a gentle, quiet way of word of mouth. Have you seen what this Jesus of Nazareth has done or is doing? Have you, have you heard the kinds of things he's talking about, how he's making a difference in our lives, how he's making us feel more fulfilled, giving us a sense of purpose, of hope, that we are indeed God's chosen people, that we're children of God loved unconditionally through Jesus' words and actions. And now Jesus comes and breaks bread, and through this sacrament of breaking of bread, he becomes known to them. Now their eyes are open. And we, as we take communion uh, in our weekly 
services in, in our weekly worship, uh, we, we hope that Jesus will open our eyes to the real and, and further truth of who Christ is for us and who we are in him, in God, and give us a sense of purpose and a sense of hope among, in our lives too. But it's in this breaking of the bread, this sacrifice, that he has given us life and continues to do so. He is there to redeem Israel, not from their suffering, but through suffering, through his suffering. He has redeemed Israel. Through his suffering and resurrection, he has redeemed all of us from our suffering, through our suffering, through him. So we thank God that Jesus has been and still is our Christ, our Savior, and the one who shows us that we are loved by God. Amen. <laughs>